Hi there, I am very happy to be having a conversation with Eliza Kelly today and we are going to be tuning into the energy of 2023 and um, with the context of like what our soul is calling us to do and embrace in this coming year. I want to tell you a little bit about Eliza now. Eliza Kelly is referred to as a rising star in modern spirituality. She is an astrologer, a witchy bestie, and the voice of Gen Z and millennial mysticism. She pens a bi-weekly column in New York Magazine's The Cut. She hosts a show with People Magazine and has authored four books. So she's been very, very busy. And I know she also has a new oracle out called There Are No Coincidences. So welcome, Elisa. So happy to be chatting together. So happy to be here. This is such a treat. <laughs> awesome. And so what we want to talk about today is what is the energy like as we move into 2023 astrologically? So in 2023, we actually have a few really meaningful shifts happening astrologically. Um, we have Saturn moving into a new zodiac sign. We have Jupiter moving into a new zodiac sign. We have Pluto moving into a new zodiac sign. And then we also have the eclipses, the nodes moving into new signs too. So I, what that means, what that, you know, how we metabolize that is there's going, going to be sort of a, a changing of the guards um, who was sort of not really being activated through these, you know, in these last couple of years, people who have felt like things have been really stagnant. There hasn't been a lot of motion. There hasn't been a lot of activity. It's very likely that now those folks are going to start to feel um, a shift energetically and that they're going to suddenly be the ones who, you know, are feeling the real main character energy of the 2023 astrology. Meanwhile, for those who feel like they have just been, you know, it's been nonstop back to back, they're burnt out, they're exhausted. It's a little bit of a reprieve for them. Oh, so that's that is cool. you know, really that's how what, I see the shift. I really get what you're saying about a change of the guards. Interesting. Yeah, because I've, I've definitely the past three or four years, literally, I think it was like I had a baby and then straight after it was like the beginning of 2020, you know, the world just yeah. went on fire. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like I'm just moving out of that period. So is it almost like we're we're taking, we've been taking turns of, going through the big shifts is that how you see it yeah um you know we all have every single zodiac sign in our birth chart mm. so we're all activated by everything mm. but it's it really on a personal level it's about you know what is activating you and where mm -hmm. so the fact that we have multiple planets moving into brand new zodiac signs um, some of these with enormously large orbits, which means we haven't experienced them in our lifetime. It's going to create, you know, some folks that were really having challenging aspects may no longer be having those challenging aspects. Mm -hmm. So this is especially optimistic and hopeful for people who have been going through a really tough time. Um, and, you know, in my practice, I've I've heard stories of people who have just been like, yeah, it's been four, five really bad years, you know, where I feel like I can't catch a break. Mm -hmm. So I think that what 2023 offers is uh, a light at the end of the tunnel for, especially for those people who may have been having some really challenging, let's say Pluto aspects mm -hmm. um, with Pluto in the last degrees of Capricorn for quite a number of years now. And of course, we had Saturn in Capricorn as well, and Jupiter in Capricorn, Jupiter in, a, in Capricorn and Aquarius, Saturn is now in Aquarius, you know, like, it's been, it's, we've had a lot of, um, a lot of the tougher planets to work with. And then of course, Jupiter, which isn't a tough planet, but is something that sort of magnifies the difficulties mm -hmm. sometimes have been sort of centered in the same area. So we're going to see that break up a little bit more next year. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And like, what kind of attitude would you recommend going into 2023, like through the year? I always recommend an attitude of, of curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't know how these 
transits are going to affect us at large. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that means on a micro and macro level. Since 2020, I have so gotten out of the habit of trying to predict anything. Um, Obviously, we knew that the 2020 astrology was really abnormal, and we knew that it was really unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we saw that so, you know, just enormously um, exaggerated in reality. Mm -hmm. And from that experience, sort of what I have shifted in my practice is is just really coming into these new astrological energies with equal parts um, skepticism and also optimism, Mm -hmm. because we genuinely don't know how they're going to play out. So Mm -hmm. we can imagine sort of like, oh no, what is it going to mean if X, Y, and Z does X, Y, and Z, but we're not going to know until we're there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that astrology is really incredible at is expanding our psyche, expanding our consciousness. But if we are not open to experiencing that, we can only expand our consciousness so far as it knows its own boundaries. Mm. Um, We are always going to sort of apply the worst case scenario or our anxieties or our fears onto something if we're not familiar with it. And there's a lot of astrology in 2023 that we're not familiar with. But that doesn't mean that it is going to be anything other than new, you know, and what new means we have to wait and see. Mm, So interesting. Yeah, I've been really shifting the way that I've been seeing a lot of things in life, but like particularly astrology, because I think we can use astrology to almost like try and like, like maneuver life and intelligence and all of that versus being like, whoa, if the cosmos is the ordered universe, then like I am part of that. And so it's like, you know, it's that, that, that shift from going retrograde eclipses, all of that going, Oh, maybe it's part of my expansion, even if it's uncomfortable. And so it's interesting. Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, I think that, um, you know, when we really surrender to astrology, we're surrendering to presence Um, because we can look and anticipate the astrology for as long as our lifetimes, we can imagine them being, um, and then beyond that, you know, we can look into the astrology of many hundreds and thousands of years into the future, but what does it do? You know, (laughs) when we are looking and anticipating that far out, astrology is also a practice of really being, of, of taking the past, of taking the future, and then integrating that into your present moment so that you can be much more aware and much more alive and much more embodied. And to me, that's good astrology is, Mm. is, is feeling embodied in the present. Mm. I love that. You know, I I was watching this, um, it was like a YouTube clip with a scientist the other day, and he was talking about how the night sky that the ancients saw was actually very different to us and actually there was a lot more that they saw and I I just found that really fascinating because you know there's so many ancient myths of like gods and goddesses say for example ancient Egypt that they're like they're from this star system or or you know creating um temples and 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 things that were in perfect alignment with the stars What, what have you ever pondered that like what the ancients believed and how they kind of like lived their life according to what they saw above them. Yeah. I mean, I I think that it's, I think that when you, when you have the opportunity to stargaze, you of course are going to think in those terms. Mm -hmm. Um, When you're looking at the constellations and recalling the myths of the constellations of that, these weren't stars, these were entities. Mm -hmm. These were entities that were cast into the heavens, you know, whether it be through oftentimes because they would be punished and sent up there like our friend Cassiopeia Mm -hmm. um you know and the relationship that our ancient ancestors had with the stars sky space is so radically different from the way that we experience it Mm -hmm. but yet there is a common thread which is that when we are looking for answers we look to the stars Mm -hmm. and that feels like it is almost intrinsically human in a way to do. Um, Mm. 
because perhaps that is, you know, the biggest unknown and the biggest mystery, even with the incredible, incredible advances in science and in astronomy and in space travel. There's still so many unknowns, you know, of just how far space extends um, and then why it even is doing that in the first place, you know, and that quest of figuring out like simply like, why are we here? Why is all of this here? What does all of this mean? I think those are some of like the really fun and juicy and impossible questions that are also just like intrinsic to astrology. Mm, I love it. And so, okay, so looking at 2023, are there any like key periods, key dates, key things um, through the year? So March is going to be a big one. Um, We have two different important events that are happening uh, in the month of March. And that's really, you know, whenever I look at the astrology of a year ahead, um, I always am thinking like, you know, what is our, what is the real time that we're going to see this new energy sort of move into high gear because of course astrology doesn't abide by the Gregorian calendar um, that starts in January sometimes it lines up with January but the astrological calendar actually starts at the end of March um, and it's still you know what the planets are going to do they're going to do regardless of whether it's a new year or not right when we look at the astrology of a new year, we're looking at it within our Gregorian calendar boundaries. And then we're like, okay, so when does it, things get really juicy? When do things like really pick up? And for us in 2023, that's the month of March. We have Saturn entering Pisces on March 7th. And then we have Pluto entering Aquarius on March 23rd. So uh, Saturn and Pluto, um, they're tough. <laughs> they're tough. They're tough. They're tough archetypes to work with. And one of the uh, the biggest signatures in 2020 was the dance between them. Uh, it That started in January, I believe January 12th, 2020, was when Saturn and Pluto linked up for the first time in 38 years. Many astrologers attribute that to the beginning of the pandemic and to sort of all of the unprecedented events that unfolded mm-hmm. subsequently. Um, but you know, these, so these two can be really tricky together. These two are not always going to be, you know, these two, when they, Saturn represents our responsibilities, Pluto represents sort of like epic transformation from, you know, it's like sort of the tower card. It's sort of like, we got to burn it all down. So when these two are synced up, uh, well, what we saw them synced up was in Capricorn, you know, we know that they had a really intense impact. But in March, Saturn is moving into a brand new zodiac sign um, that's actually really different than where it's been since the year 20, I believe it was 2017. So in 2017, Saturn went into Capricorn. um, And then in 2020, Saturn went into Aquarius. These two zodiac signs are really quite (laughs) rigid and they could be really... um, sort of stoic and ruthless in a lot of ways. But on March 7th, Saturn goes into Pisces, which is a much more sensitive, emotional, um, very sort of intuitive energy. So this is going to be for the first time since 2017 that we're seeing Saturn in not as aggressive of a zodiac sign. So this is going to actually give Saturn, this is going to soften Saturn up from what we've been experiencing for the past very many years. So I'm really excited to see sort of a softer and more gentle um, and a little bit more intuitive Saturn because this is also, Saturn is so important. It's how we are responsible, but can, but you know, knowing that this is shifting into um, emotional, beautiful, inspired, poetic, lyrical Pisces is going to give it such a different tone And then uh, Pluto is going to move into Aquarius and Aquarius is the zodiac sign that's associated with innovation. But what's really remarkable here is we haven't seen Pluto move into Aquarius since the 1700s. So this is a really major transit that's happening because it takes Pluto 248 years to go around the whole zodiac. So this is the first time in any of our lifetimes we're going to be experiencing Pluto in Aquarius. 
Um, and I do think that in terms of, you know, things like technology and medicine and the way that we interact with our earth, um, maybe the way we solve for some of the really big issues that we're having on our beautiful planet, uh, Pluto and Aquarius is going to help catalyze change. Wow. So it's kind of going more into like water and flow and like intuition. Well, Aquarius is actually an air sign. Mm -hmm. So um, the energy of the airy Aquarius is about um, systems. It's about networks. It's about thinking. It's about the mind. Um, it definitely is a lot about consciousness, a lot about humanity. Um, so I think that it is going to be, it's, you know, the, the energy around it is very much sort of like, how are we going to, how can we help? How can we help save the world? Mm, mm. And then, so from, from hearing you speak then to me, tell me if I'm hearing this right. Like, do you see, like, we've had so much polarization and separation over the past couple of years in particular, or few years, do you see there being a kind of like a coming together or a softening of that? Or is that like just a long way off? <laughs> I think that it's, you know, I want to, I, I think that what we, the, the next conversation really needs to be like, why is this happening? Mm. You know, I think before there's a reunification of things, I think that it's really, and maybe Saturn and Pisces is going to help facilitate this, you know, of just some more, some deeper conversations and some really deep soul searching as to mm. why we are so polarized and what this, you know, what this spectrum is. Why is there such extremism and such, you know, so much radicalism on either side. Um, and I think that understanding what is, is sort of like, what, what is fueling that is going to be really important and then being able to find common ground. Mm, mm. And like what I've seen, particularly over the past few years as well is like, particularly like in spiritual circles, um, well, I think generally there's more people waking up, but within spiritual circles as well, uh, at least for me, there I've seen a, a, a call to embody the soul, embody like our awakening, you know, so it's not just about an ascent, it's a descent as well. Um, do you see that continuing for the next few years or? Yeah, I mean, that has been such an important you know, something that was really troubling in the spiritual community that I saw over the past few years, because I've been doing this for 10 years. So I've seen a lot of undulations of sort of the collective spiritual consciousness. Something that was really troubling was this sort of like concept of ascension, right? Mm -hmm. This like leaving, you know, it's like being above your present body, being right. sort of, you know, not actually feeling like you like be like treating this reality like it is um mundane and calling this sort of like your boring 2d or whatever it is 1d mm. 2d all the d's world yeah <laughs> and 3d and then there's like the 5d ascension and it's like right. okay but like here we are you know and like we're here for a reason in these mm. bodies in these forms our soul is our body our body is our soul you know these are these work together um i think that Jupiter moving into Aries, which was one of the transits of this past year, was really meaningful in helping people sort of like, sort of just be like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Like shake it off a little bit and be like, no, I have to be, I, I'm happy to be alive right here and right now. And I need to figure out what this means to me before I can be ascending into 5D mm. matrix structures. <laughs> and I think that we're going to see, so Jupiter is going to be in Aries again. Uh, into 2023. And then we're also going to see Jupiter in Taurus, which is going to be so delightful. And the energy around this is really about being alive. It's about enjoying your life. Um, it's about connecting to pleasure and to the things that keep you healthy and happy and stable and safe. So I think that we are going to see sort of more focus on like living a good life. Mm -hmm. and what that means and how we can really appreciate and enjoy being earthlings. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 
And are there any other key times during the year? So there is another important uh, astrological event that is happening, which is going to be uh, a new eclipse series beginning, which is the Aries and Libra eclipse cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, So for the past, since 2021, since last year, we have been seeing eclipses on the Taurus and Scorpio axis, Mm -hmm. um, which is a lot about sort of like, you know, um, stabilization and secrets coming out. Um, what does it mean to feel safe and what does it mean to feel to, to sort of get to the bottom of something and that spectrum, which I lovingly call the life and death access, because Taurus is associated with the spring when things are in bloom and Scorpio is associated with the fall when things are going into hibernation and decay. Um, this has been in the fixed sign. So it's been really intense in terms of, it's been really hard to see motion because there's not really an interest in, everyone thinks they're right. (laughs) Everyone thinks they're right with these eclipses. Everyone, and I do think that this is part of the extreme polarization. You know, I do think that having both sides, you know, represented by an access in astrology, having both sides be like, I'm 100% right, um, is obviously going to make it really difficult for us to find common ground. (laughs) But Next year, we have the Aries and Libra eclipses beginning, which are cardinal signs. So they're much more about, let's start this. Let's make movement on this. Let's just go for it. Let's think later. You know, let's just like get this, get the wheels in motion. I think that 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 energy is going to feel really refreshing um, through the eclipse cycle. And Aries and Libra are about the concepts of me and we, um, identity and partnership. So I do think that that could actually be really significant and meaningful for sort of opening conversations about individual autonomy and collective responsibility. Mm, Beautiful. And when, when is that? So that is going to start in April of next year. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So it's it's quite a a big start to the year. Like obviously it's more equinox start of the year, (laughs) but, but yeah, so, so, so a lot happening early on. Yes. I would say that um, 2023 is definitely a year that we're going to feel, we're going to feel the shifts of it starting at the end of February into March. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And yeah, are there any other trends that you see like emerging as a result of like what you see astrologically in 2023? Well, you know, this is one of the cool things about 2023 is that we have so many new beginnings. Um, that it is sort of a watch and wait, you know, I, with all of these, the new energy that's shifting, it's an opportunity for us, you know, it's all going to be activating a different part of our chart. It's all going to be activating different parts of our respective countries and cities charts. Mm. So it really is, you know, it's depending on where these different energies illuminate your chart, it's going to open your eyes to very different realities than you're currently presented with. Mm. Amazing. So, so it really is a year of new beginnings, new yeah. opening your eyes to seeing things in different ways. Exactly. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you. I wanted to just share as well, you've got a new Oracle out, right? Yes, I do. Can you tell um, us a bit about that? Sure. So my, my very first card deck uh, is, is coming out November 15th. It's called There Are No Coincidences. It's 44 cards of signs, symbols, and synchronicities. Um, So the idea around it is that um, if you are looking to sort of figure out what the message is in something that you're working through or exploring, whether it's what is the message for the day, what is the message for the circumstance or the situation, um, pulling a card or doing a spread of those cards is going to be able to anchor you of the tanks, which is there are no coincidences in your own life. So Mm -hmm. things that are going to help you remind you of what the overall picture, the overall meaning, um, what the value of that experience really is. Amazing. And where's the best place for people to find that? Wherever books are sold. (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, I'll include a link below this video as well. So thank Thank you you. so much, Elisa. It's been so great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Wishing everyone a beautiful new beginning feeling new year for 2023.